Right, okay, so what the, the claim I'm making is this. Human chimp ancestry is not absolutely true according to scientists or philosophers of science. It is actually an assumption which they try and verify by looking at genomes, by looking at anatomy. And when they go out and do that, they do actually come across some issues. Now, one of the issues they come across is homoplasy, where you have similarities. Now, we were talking about the paternity test, that was to do with humans, where we know already that common ancestry is there because it happens in front of us. So that is a that's a, a that's, that's a false analogy. But when I can bring in front of you two genomes, and I can ask you, uh, James, right, James, right? I can say to you, James, do they share a common ancestor? Imagine they look 99% identical. Would you say yes or no? They, you'd say that they probably do share a common probably ancestor. Probably do. We know in genetics and in biochemistry of things which are identical which do not have a common ancestor. Do, do you mean the entire genome or a particular the gene? Recent, recent common ancestor. So for example, the, the placental saber-toothed tiger and the marsupial saber-toothed tiger. When, when you look at them, they have a lot of similarities, striking similarities. But the, the, the placental saber-toothed tiger is closer to the kangaroo than it is to the marsupial saber-toothed tiger. Yeah. Now the similarities between human beings and pigs exist genetically which do not exist between human beings and chimpanzees. But so overall, how do you explain this? But overall, we, we possess a much greater overlap of our genes like between uh, chimps than we do with, between pigs. Sure. And the reason, and, and that's not based on an assumption. That's like the reason why that we believe that that's evidence for having a shared common ancestor is because genetically we look at how DNA behaves and we observe that kind of um, uh, there's a certain normal rate of uh, genetic mutation unless there's you know in the, unless there's extra presence of mutagens. And so we know that like you know given that kind of uh, DNA mutates at a certain rate over time, like the closer kind of two organisms are in DNA, that provides good evidence that they are, they have a closer common ancestor. Because it would be, it would be very, it would be very rare that kind of two kind of totally unrelated organisms would happen to mutate to become more similar. It would be much, 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 much more likely that they'd mutate to become less similar. So it could, it could be that kind of a particular organism like a pig could, uh, by chance, mutate a similar gene uh, to uh, an organism that uh, it isn't very closely related to, uh, just by chance, and they both evolve that same gene independently. But that would be much less. That would happen much less frequently than a gene arising once and then being passed on to both new uh, subsequent species. Now, what you've explained there is the maximum likelihood method. Yeah. You're speaking there. All I'm actually saying about that particular method, which they use, which is the conventional way they work out relationships of the tree of life. All I'm saying about that is, is still based on a number of assumptions. Okay, right. but like lots, lots of all sciences, and yet we still trust science. I'm not saying not to trust it. What I'm saying is we should know and understand. It's not saying is that literally true. Okay, but, okay, but, sir, but that, that, that's not a very sir, bold sir, claim, though, sir, because sir, the same sir, is true of all sir, science. Now, maximum likelihood. Tell me which one of these assumptions is wrong in maximum likelihood. Firstly, there is the assumption that human beings, regardless of what evidence exists out there? We have a common ancestor with something out there, natural. That's just an assumption in science, which is naturalism. So we cannot accept a human being appeared in the history of life without being something else. That's one assumption. The second assumption is of natural selection being the mechanism by which you have change. And I'm going to speak about this because this That's adds up as something. Okay, one more. One second. Okay, homology is an assumption again and the assumption of a single origin. Now this assumption of natural selection... No, no, none, of, none of those are... The, all of those are misrepresentations of what's how? believed in how? conventional human biology. How? How? No one says... No one says so the, 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 which one of these four? Okay, could, could you repeat the first one? Because that was definitely wrong. Yeah, Naturalism. I mean, so, the, so could you repeat it just once more? Okay, so for example, Gareth Nelson, he explains it best, he's an evolutionary biologist and an atheist. He says, we have to have ancestors as human beings. We'll pick those. Why? Because they're the best candidates and they have to be there. Okay. What he's basically saying there is, methodologically, because scientists subscribe to something known as naturalism, we have to have an ancestor, a, a non-human ancestor, with something natural out there. 
it's not possible using science to assume that human beings came in the history of life without being linked to something else natural. No, no, like what, 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 what's a kind of, what a, uh, an astute scientist should say is that kind of, there is much more evidence that human beings arose uh, by uh, kind of these mechanisms, like kind of being reproduced. There's much more evidence for that than assuming that they popped out of uh, the figment of some deity. And so we should make, we should make, we should, we should uh, adopt the assumption which best fits the evidence we have at hand. And so kind of, yeah, yeah, a much better working kind of model, the model we should adopt is that kind of, you know, just like kind of, uh, you know, we were given birth to, kind of our previous uh, organism was given birth to, we, we should kind of uh, proceed in that view and adopt that model rather than, rather than adopting a model which doesn't have any evidence to, to support it, apart from a book of, what's that called? Uh, be, being sensible, being logical. No, it's, not. it's actually called methodological naturalism. No, well, no, no, me methodolo no, no, hold on. Methodological naturalism, there's two types. And you, 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 uh, your friend, so Hans Sortis, explains you know, this. You were supposed to challenge the assumption, not verify it. You just verified it. In, 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 what, in what way? You said, you said I misrepresented and these assumptions aren't there. But I just showed, you just showed me yourself that assumption exists. No, I, I didn't assume, like, there can be no such thing as magic. What I said was that the ex the model, the model that kind of uh, human beings kind of were reproduced and, uh, and like came about via reproduction rather than something magical or, or, or some uh, kind of beings divine intervention or divine providence or molding people out of magical clay or that sort of thing. That, that there's much more evidence to support the model that and human beings came about by, so, uh, so by uh, like these this, natural processes, or yeah. what you would call natural processes. What you're processes. doing is this, you're conflating methodological naturalism with philosophical naturalism. I, 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 no, no, I, 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 think, I think that's Should what you why? assumed that Should I did. Why? I, because scientists, here's what they do. When they are looking at a particular subject, a patient, they have, they put on the lenses of methodological naturalism, they, they assume there's no soul, they assume the the brain is simply the mind at, sorry, the mind is simply the brain at work. This is known as methodological naturalism. Now, philosophical naturalism, the belief that nature is all that there's out there, you're conflating these two. All I made, oh, okay, now let's go back to what I said, and, which is why I explained it and I wanted you to challenge it, but you haven't challenged it so far. I said that human chimpanzee tree or anything in the tree of life is still based upon these four assumptions. First thing I said is methodological naturalism, and so far you've only verified it. Not only no, have you have, verified no, no, it. I've said that it, no, I've, I've not like taken it. I've, also, I've, not, I've, not, I've not just like kind of that, jumped, you've I've not left to the that conclusion. The common though. mistake which is done is you've confused that with physical, with philosophical naturalism. No, no, I haven't. Like, I, I, I'm aware of like kind of the difference between methodological and fantastic, philosophical fantastic. And naturalism. So, no, James, I've, I've said that like just, one, one, one sure, model sure, has evidence to support sure, it, the sure, other sure, model has no evidence to support it. No, 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 that's an assumption. Okay, okay, so what's so okay. what's the evidence okay, to support sure. kind of um, perfect. Uh, creationism? Perfect, perfect. Let's, let's stop there for a second. Now what's happened so far is this. You've agreed, scientists agree to methodological naturalism. Now you're asking why is you're making an argument for philosophical naturalism. Now, no, no, I'm, no, I'm not. No, no. It, you're saying no. why is creationism better than this? Which is philosophical naturalism. What are you not saying? No, no, but like, so what, the way I would understand, if I said I am a philosophical naturalist, then I would be asserting that kind of um, nothing in nature occurs through um, kind of, uh, you know, supernatural means or divine intervention. I'd, I'd just be kind of taking that as an assumption. Rather than what, what I'm doing is I'm, is I'm kind of looking at two different models for how we came about. One model which has kind of evidence supporting okay, it, no, no, and no, the other no, model which just has no, a book no, of fairy no, tales. Now, sir, what you're doing now is you're going beyond the arena of science. Okay. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm happy to be so, ph so, philosophical so, as well. So let's let's leave that discussion about whether naturalism or supernaturalism is the best worldview to the end. What I, all I was saying was methodological naturalism is, a, is an assumption in science. Uh, uh, well, no, it sounded like what you said was that philosophical naturalism is an assumption no, in science. No, Okay, okay, so... Yeah. Oh, so we right. agree then. Okay, okay. Now, so, yeah, here's the thing. Even secular mainstream atheist philosophy, science and evolutionary biologists agree that methodological naturalism and philosophical naturalism are not the same thing. Okay. And naturalism itself, philosophical naturalism is an act of faith. 
Yeah. For example, I'm sure you've heard of Michael Roos, very prominent philosopher of science. This is what he says as well. Now let's move on to the other assumptions because we know methodological naturalism is there. The other assumption is natural selection. But 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 hold on, no hold on. I, I, I I'm sorry, but like. Kind of by, by calling it an assumption, we're, we're, that there's an implication there that it's not based on evidence. Whereas, like in fact, kind of uh, adopting the, the model that kind of human beings arose just by uh, biological processes, rather than but is, is is supported by evidence more than the model that human beings arose by divine intervention. Okay, assuming, so, so, assuming, so why are we calling it an assumption okay. when it's really kind of just a uh, okay, sure. you know a sensible kind of approach, like which, which is more sure, sensible sure. and which now, is more well supported. Now what you're doing is this. You're again doing something in which you are conflating philosophical and methodological by saying the success of methodological leads to philosophical. No, no, but I'm, no, 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 but... That's what no, you said. No, 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 because I'm not, I'm not saying that um, we, I'm not saying we should uh, claim it no, because if I was assuming that, if I was assuming, Didn't you say if, I was, if I was assuming philosophical naturalism, then I'd assume, you know, there can never be any divine intervention. Okay, I, I haven't done that. What I've said is that in terms of which, which model is more supported when it comes to the the sure. uh, arrival sir, of sir, human beings, sir, sir, have, I, 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 I have weighed up okay, the evidence, sir. and one model is more well supported. Look, that doesn't mean I'm ruling sure. out any sure, sure. divine intervention the, in the sir, future. Sir, so I'm not being a philosophical sir, the naturalist. Discussion about whether naturalism or supernaturalism best explains human beings, morality, consciousness, everything else, design, we could talk about it in the end. For now, let's stick to these four assumptions. So methodological no, naturalism no, but, 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 is there. No, but it, it isn't a different question, though. It, it is, a, it is, it is a, a, a similar question, but what we're but speaking it, about it, it here relate, is... It relates very specifically sir. to whether scientists are assuming that there will never, that there can't sir. be any okay, kind sir, of, uh, sir, you know, divine sir, intervention. Sir, sir. Methodological naturalism is a working assumption in science. This is according to the standard understanding of all philosophers of science. If you don't disagree with that, you can. I'm yeah, just I'm saying not, it's I'm an not. assumption then. Can yeah. I ask you, sir? Now, wait, one second, sir. Natural selection is another assumption because no amount of similarities in the world is enough to establish that you have common ancestry. You have to have a mechanism. Do you disagree or agree with that? Okay, you repeat that, sorry? So. No amount of similarities between human beings or chimpanzees, human beings or pigs, genetically or anatomically, are enough to establish common ancestry. You have to show a mechanism. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely desirable, having a mechanism. Not desirable. It's, it's a, you actually have to have it necessarily. Yeah, uh, okay, that sounds yeah. reasonable. Okay. Yeah. So that's also an assumption that natural selection leads A to B. No, no, it's, it's, not, it's not an assumption because that also has evidence supporting it. Sir, this is the way that science works. You begin off with an assumption or a hypothesis, then you try and verify it. Okay, correct? but then can, can we call it a hypothesis? Because assumption has the implication that you're kind of leaping to a conclusion that's just based on a, a gut feeling or faith rather than based on a logical inference. I agree, I agree. Okay, so, so, let, so let's say it's a logical inference no, sir, sir, that sir, kind of natural selection is a mechanism which no. kind of, it, well, okay, well, fine. Look, we have some good reasons for this. Number one, there is a lot of propaganda about natural selection and how efficient it is. Just total nonsense. No, the, the, what, what you're referring to are kind of minor disagreements no, between, no, no. between kind of uh, biologists who would all agree that there is ample evidence that humans and chimps share a common ancestor. No, but sir, sir, so you're, you're, you're pointing to like two, slight, two, slight differences two, two in schools point, of thought. Two points here. Number one, you're, number one. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Human beings and chimpanzees, you cannot claim common ancestry unless you have a mechanism. You already yeah. agreed about that. Number two. Yeah. Natural selection, we've been taught for the last 150 years, has great explanatory power. But there's loads of evidence against it. And in fact, just two years ago, the Royal Society in London, the most prestigious science society in the world, a whole group of scientists came together, atheist evolutionary biologists, and guess what the main question was? Does natural selection work? So the public no, that, thinks that, that, natural that, that, selection works. That's misrepresenting works. it. Really? Yeah. So what were they talking about? They, they were talking about uh, two different schools: the modern synthesis versus the extended uh, synthesis. Right. Yes. Fantastic. And they and they actually agree on like a great deal. They only have minor disagreements. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, that's not true. That's not true. Yes, it is. Hang on. The extended... no, none, with, with any of the biologists at that event, dispute that natural there is selection. good evidence that humans and chimpanzees share a common ancestry, no, recent no, common ancestors. No. So none of them would disagree none of, on that. None of them would. Based on, based on their yes, evidence sir, and sir. their investigation. Sure, sir, but that's a complete red herring. No, why is it a red herring? I'll explain why. Doesn't none it show of, that they're kind wait, of, they wait, share wait, ample common sir, ground? Wait, wait. All of them, they believe in human chimpanzee street, all of them were atheists. But here's what Eva Jablanka said. Are you sure they're all atheists? Sir, 
What I'm going to do is this. Whenever I try and reference atheists, I only use those ones who do not believe in God, who do not believe in intelligent design, do not believe in anything like that. Now, Eva Jablanka, here's what she says. She believes in a type of Lamarckian evolution, which is, as you know, an alternative to Darwinian evolution. Now, when she got up there and she tried to explain this, she got challenged by those who believe in Darwinism. Now, the point here is this. She was putting forward... What kind of challenge were they presented with? What kind of challenge? What she was doing was this. She was putting forth an alternative, which was making them uneasy. Why? Because they automatically realized that by challenging Darwinism, 150 years of propaganda will be unraveled. No, that's, that, that, that's such a they misrepresentation. That, which is also no, why, no, that's, sir, that's sir, not true. sir, when a secular atheist who recently died, Jerry Foden, didn't believe in God, when he challenged Darwinian evolution, he was called a secular creationist, even though he didn't believe in God. What does that go to show you? There by is who? pressure in academia by the uh, Darwinists, by people. By, by, like who? Okay. Read the book, The Altberg 16 by Su Susan Mazur. She's a um, uh, Australian journalist. She went out, she interviewed Jerry Foden and all these guys. This is what they said in their book, in, in the book, the, Alt the Altberg 16. She says that when she was interviewing him, he said, I'm being called a secular creationist because I'm challenging Darwin. Now, here's what some other but, but, scientists but, but, but what do you, but, but what do you mean by them challenging Darwin? By them challenging Darwin, challenging natural selection. But what do you mean? But do you mean they're, they're saying that natural selection doesn't happen, or are they saying that natural selection is one of the uh, mechanisms sir, by which kind sir, of biodiversity occurs? Sir, but there are other mechanisms, sir, and they have been kind of uh, underrepresented in sir, the mainstream this, that's discourse. That's a good question. So let me break it down into two concepts. Natural selection can be broken down into two things. Either it can be a tautology, which is survival of the fittest. We're not talking about that. Clearly, the fittest survive. That's why they survive. Yeah. What we're speaking about is, does natural selection lead to biological novelty and body forms and these types of things? So it's a completely different question. Now, do, do, do any of them disagree with that? Do any of them say that natural selection... Yeah, of course they do. No, 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 no. I, I think that's a total misrepresentation. Sir, I think they'd all agree sir, that natural selection does account for speciation. But there are sir, other kind of mechanisms sir, like epigenetics and like... Um, I know, so so you, do, you do agree epigenetics is an alternative? Epigenetics that you have um, kind of uh, uh, not evidence for. It's not alternative. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not yeah, it's alternative. alternative. It's, so it's not an alternative. Support, it's, no, no, no. no. Do you know, let me clear, clear, me, let, let's be clear by what we mean by epigenetics. The, like epigenetics would, an example of epigenetics would be how uh, kind of whether a gene is turned on or off can be part, can it, it's not, a gene can be turned on during lifetime and that can be passed on to the next generation. Is yeah, and, and so we have evidence of that occurring and so there's no reason why so, that's at odds sir, with Darwinism. Sir, sir, that's sir, accepted and sir, you know, there's nothing, so, kind of, there's so, no, so tell it's me not this. like kind of there's a big so, schism or a big rift or like, oh no, the whole pyramid's come so, crashing so, down. So, sir, sir, tell me things. this. Why is it that academics have spoken about Lamarck being mocked for 200 years? Because he didn't have any evidence for what he was no, that's not presupposing. True. He, he hadn't identified a sir, uh, molecular mechanism sir, like methylation. you have to be consistent here. Either Darwinian evolution as we have it today, in terms of a gene-centered view, either is compatible with a Lamarckian gene epigenetic view, or it's not. You can't have it both ways. It, 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 no, like the, the, the mainstream kind of, there's nothing in the mainstream view on evolution that says epigenetics doesn't occur because we have evidence I agree. that epigenetics and occurs. How, 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 and so when, you're, you're, when you're did trying, we get that evidence? It was pretty recent. It's yes, probably like it was 25 recent. years ago. Or so, something. since that evidence has been coming out, what does it show? It actually shows you have adaptation which is not Darwinian. Yeah. Okay, but we don't need to be... We don't so, sir, you agree it's no, no. adaptation, which is oh, not... Sure, 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 but there's no... It's not even... Uh, what do you mean, it's not adaptation? The adaptation doesn't work like that. It's not adaptation. Well, I, I, I'd say it's adaptation. I don't have a problem with that word. No, but like, it's adaptation, no, 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 but, which is non-Darwinian. Sure, but like... what? what so, there you go, so, so, so it's an alternative. So, so, so is genetic drift. As so is, yes. Yeah, and which so is there's, why there's, when nothing, there's nothing wrong with theories evolving and, and finding... And genetic drift is another form of non-Darwinian evolution. But like, but like, there's no, we're, we're not bound to say Darwin was 100% correct. Do you agree with that? Correct. Do you agree genetic drift is also another example of non-Darwinian evolution? It, it's, a, it's a form of evolution that he kind of hasn't considered. Okay, sure. sure. But like, but there's no reason why we need to be bound to what Darwin... Sir, this is what you always do. You kind of conflate the modern synthesis and the biological mainstream with Darwinism. And you just leap, 
broads and backwards and say, oh, did Darwinism know about this? Oh, then Darwinism is wrong. But like, then just a few minutes ago, you're talking about the modern synthesis, which is like totally different. So, when I refer to Darwinism, I'm speaking about the gene centered modern synthesis view. I'm not talking about Darwin did not know about genes. But genetic drift, like, there's nothing kind of contradictory to the gene centered view about genetic drift. Well, of course there is. Uh, okay, explain it. Because you have non-Darwinian evolution. No, and in no, fact, no, no, but it's gene-centered though. Sir, in 1975... No, no, it, it, like, sir, sir. Genetic drift when, is just probability. When, when no, genetic, one would, no one would sir, argue against it. When genetic drift was published academically, the first thing it was 